Make more sense for anything? No? End of slide. Okay, Brandon, Max. Look at that. So, um, I'm going to talk about cultural resources and socioeconomics, which is uh, a fairly, um, they're similar, yet different. Um, so, cultural resources, what are cultural resources? NEPA and Seeger require that agencies consider the effects of their actions and aspects of, of the human environment. Uh, humans relate to their environment through their culture, so the cultural aspects of the environment, uh, for example, cultural uses of the natural environment, the built environment, uh, human social institutions obviously must be uh, considered under the environment. Considering cultural resources, you're, you're looking at uh, many of these acts. As you can see, many involve uh, Native American um, preservation acts. Uh, there's some archaeological uh, stuff, that, uh, abandoned shipwrecks. And then in uh, some of the later uh, executive orders, you have historic buildings and Indian sacred sites. So cultural resources can include a broad spectrum of studies and through and a thorough environmental analysis under NEPA should systematically address the human, social, and cultural aspects of the environment, as well as those that are more, that are more natural, um, and should address the relationship between uh, human and natural environment. Um, culturally valued aspects of the environment generally include historic properties, uh, other, which we'll talk about uh, shortly as well with pace. Other culturally valued pieces of real property, um, cultural use of the biophysical environment, and such uh, intangible social cultural sorry. Yes. I'm going to do that for me. Thank you. Um, uh, and other, other attributes of, like social <coughs> cohesion, social institutions, Religious, religious practices and cultural institutions. <coughs> Thank you. Um, so, going back to one, one of the main aspects in this area that a, uh, a, a DIS looks at for cultural resources are uh, rock shelters, because Indians around here actually uh, use these shelters. And surprisingly enough, uh, rock shelters have been found in Mount Pleasant. Uh, one is located in Briarcliff near the Sawmill River Road. And the other is um, south of Echo Lake, which is, I think, a little north of here, Echo Lake. And they're also called Leatherman Caves. I, I think many people have heard about the Leatherman that travel the, in this area. But in general, uh, in the, in, when you're looking at cultural resources, this is one of the big issues around here. This is a, a make or break, do or die thing. And uh, when I was out in the parking lot, I did not observe any rock shelters there. <laughs> So, um, and then another part of um, cultural resources, as I said, was historic uh, properties. And um, I did a brief history of Pace Campus, uh, which um, in, in 16, it, it starts in 1650 with Frederick uh, Philip, Philip, Philipsy, or how, how, how would anybody, I call it Philips. Philips. Philips, right? Philips Manor. Um, and uh, by, 19, by 1693, he acquired most of the land 
uh, along the, the eastern shore of the Hudson River from Yonkers to uh, the Croton River, which was uh, 156,000 acres. Um, and farming at this time was the predominant use of the land, and it pretty much stayed that way uh, for most of, of uh, the history of, of what is now Pace Campus, the land here. And so being a farming community, the uh, Phillips family also had a, a mill which is located in Sleepy Hollow here. Uh, the family was forced to sell off their property after the Revolutionary War. And so after the, uh, when they sold the property, uh, it eventually ended up in the hands of uh, Samuel Baker, who was a, a shoemaker. And uh, he built the original, uh, what is known as the, the uh, Choate House. Um, which was named after Dr. Choate. Um, Dr. Choate used the property as a uh, uh, private sanitarium for the treatment of mental uh, and nervous disorders. And um, I, I think it's still used for that same purpose, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. And uh, during, this, during the time that he uh, had this house, he, he put a large uh, addition on, a large wing to Choate House. And, so this wing, which would later become Mark's Hall, was moved. Uh, after the death of Dr. Choate and the end of the sanitarium, uh, Dr. Choate's widow had the wing, um, which is Mark's Hall, moved down from where Choate is now, because that's the original area, uh, down to uh, the current location, uh, its present location here now. And then um, after her death at, in, in um, she lived to be 95 years old in 1926. The land, uh, the, the property exchanged hands uh, several times, eventually ended up in the, uh, the ownership of Wayne Marks, who was alumnus of Pace. And uh, he, in 1962, bequeathed the property, uh, the estate, to the, uh, to the university. And that, that was the initial property, not, not Choate House, but Marks Hall was the initial property of the Pace campus. So, uh, so really that is uh, uh, the conclusions that uh, we came to in the cultural resources that Pace does have a very well documented history. And um, obviously there are no rock shelters in the parking lot. And uh, the current historic structures are to be preserved. And as uh, Sarah pointed out, the dorm is located uh, you know, within a meeting, a zoning variation, but to not have a great uh, deal of impact on it. And so there would be no significant um, cultural impacts. But I did think that it would be prudent, once that blacktop got ripped off, to uh, have maybe a Pace historian or somebody go around for a few hours with a, um, a metal detector to see what's under there. You know, I, I think a, that parking lot's probably been paved since the 1970s, I would think. Um, so uh, as a, a mitigation. One more. So now we're going to do socioeconomics, which is, as I said, is similar. And um, really, the two can blend together. But um, uh, in looking at the socioeconomics, I just took the economics part, because I didn't do too much of that with the, uh, in the cultural resources. So in looking at the economic um, uh, impacts of construction, um, there, there would be a creation of some temporary construction jobs in building the, uh, uh, the uh, building, obviously, the project of approximately 25 to 30 people. And those people may have an imp a, a slight impact on local business for the duration of the, of the time. But, but just temporary. There would be no, um, no permanent impacts. So with the socioeconomics, there's, there's no significant long-term impacts. And uh, as Sarah also mentioned, because we're replacing one dorm with another, our excellent uh, current facilities operation department and their, their top-notch people will be more than able to handle uh, any, uh, anything that comes up. And the current food service is also going to be moved, so there'll be no real um, uh, need for an additional staff in, in that. And then lastly, um, in, in um, combining with what um, Tom said, it's very important that in these new building systems and the energy efficient systems that the, the uh, staff who's maintaining it be trained properly. So possibly adding uh, either <coughs> current staff in the new systems or um, hiring someone uh, familiar with these systems to run it. 
So again, just a very uh, modest to no, no impacts uh, were found in the, social, in the cultural resources or the socioeconomics. So thanks, and I'll see you all at the show house. Thank <laughs> you.